Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Indeed, the Lord is near. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. We come to this Gaudete Sunday. We come the salmon-coloured <laughs> vestments, I shall call them. I don't know what quite colour they're coming out on the live stream as we come to celebrate this day of joy. Mass is being celebrated this evening. Uh, Guildford Catenians have asked that we might pray for vocations, for which uh, we're very grateful. I think it's also very generous of them to want to see uh, more priests uh, in the parish. Uh, the team of three priests ganged up on them at the recent Catenian quiz, um, and we were lucky enough uh, to win. Uh, if we'd have been two in number, we wouldn't have done. So thank you to the Catenians uh, for even, uh, despite the, the quiz, praying that there may be more priests to serve the church, to serve this parish, to serve uh, the community of faith. We begin this celebration by lighting that third candle on the Advent wreath and praying that we might be blessed. Lord our God, we praise you for your Son, Jesus Christ. He is Emmanuel, the hope of the peoples. He is the wisdom that teaches and guides us. He is the saviour of every nation. Lord God, let your blessing come upon us as we light the candle of this wreath. May the wreath and its light be a sign of, God's, of Christ's promise to bring us salvation. May he come quickly and not delay. We ask this. Through Christ 
our Lord. Amen. Bold to ask the Lord to come quickly when we recognize that we are ill prepared to meet Him. So we pause and we ask the gift of His mercy. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the poor, to bind up hearts that are broken, to proclaim liberty to captives, freedom to those in prison, to proclaim a year of favour from the Lord. I exult for joy in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me in the garments of salvation. He has wrapped me in the cloak of integrity, like a bridegroom wearing his wreath, like a bride adorned in her jewels. For as the earth makes fresh things grow, as a garden makes seed spring up, so will the Lord make both integrity and praise spring up in the sight of the nations. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul rejoices in God, my Saviour. My spirit finds its joy in God, the living God. My soul proclaims your mighty deeds. My spirit sings the greatness of your name. My soul rejoices. 
says, in God my Savior, my spirit finds its joy in God the living God. Just as you promised Abraham, you come to free your people, Israel. Reading from St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Be happy at all times, pray constantly, and for all things give thanks to God, because this is what God expects you to do in Christ Jesus. Never try to suppress the spirit or treat gift of prophecy with contempt. Think before you do anything. Hold on to what is good and avoid every form of evil. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy. And may you all be kept safe and blameless, spirit and soul and body, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God has called you, and he will not fail you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to John. A man came, sent by God. His name was John. He came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light, so that everyone might believe through him. He was not the light, only a witness to speak for the light. This is how John appeared as a witness. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He not only declared, but he declared quite openly, I am not the Christ. Well then, they asked, are you Elijah? I am not, he said. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you? We must take back an answer to those who sent us. What have you to say about yourself? So John said, I am as Isaiah the prophet prophesied, a voice that cries in the wilderness, make a straight way for the Lord. Now these men have been sent by the Pharisees and they put this further question to him. Why are you baptizing if you're not the Christ and not Elijah and not the prophet? John replied, I baptize with water, but there stands among you, unknown to you, the one who is coming after me, and I'm not fit to undo his sandal strap. This happened at Bethany, on the far side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. if I may, to start with a childhood uh, reminiscence. One of the first and strongest things I recall were the slag heaps, like pyramids, like mountains, artificial mountains. There were pit heaps all over, the great waste, the unburnable rubbish. We played about in them and got very dirty. 
I remember our street and I can see the sun just managing to penetrate the fog and the coal heap at the end. Have worked out. This is not my own childhood uh, re reminiscence. Uh, Engerfield Green doesn't have many coal uh, mines or heaps. They're actually the words of Henry Moore, the sculptor, reflecting uh, shortly before his death, looking back on his own childhood. Perhaps it was that science of the sun being hidden from him that had made him frightened of the dark. He related that the family kept provisions in the cellar and he would be sent down to fetch them. He said he went sideways down the stairs so that he could keep an eye on the light coming through the door at the top. It may in part explain his very distinctive style of sculpture. He would take a solid block of rock and while carving, he would, in various ways, uh, carve through it great holes so that the light uh, could be seen. In a sense, the child who grew up with the mountain obscuring the light became the man who shaped the stone and allowed the light through. In a sense, too, of course, that's the story of uh, the great prophet of today's gospel. The man who grows up seeking the light. His name was John. He came as a witness, as a witness to speak for the light. As we were reminded last week, he'd come to lay low the mountains, to fill the valleys. As the gospel this week says, to make a straight way for the Lord. This is, in a sense, is God's sculpture. And the presence of the Lord will bring extraordinary joy as that light becomes clear, as we're reminded on this Gaudete, this joyful Sunday. The prophet Isaiah, who we heard of first, the, the setting we had next, which is actually uh, from Luke, the words of Our Lady, and St. Paul sum up the sense of this Gaudete Sunday, the sense of joy at the closeness of God and his people. Isaiah began in that sequence of readings, my soul, sorry, I exult for joy in the Lord. My spirit rejoices in my God. Our Lady in the Psalm says, my soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. And St. Paul writes, for all these things, give thanks to God. This Gaudete Sunday, this day of joy, reminds us that we're approaching the second stage of our Advent. Until now, the readings and the prayers have focused principally on the coming of God in glory at the end of time. This week, the focus changes the joy is that, in the words of John the Baptist, someone is coming. The one who is coming after me, and I'm not fit to undo his sandal strap. The joy is not automatic. We need to be aware of that nearness of the Lord, to walk in his ways, and to live the life to which we are called. It's been a day of great joy, I have to say, here in the church, as you'll know, uh, we began this morning and invited people to come and be reconciled with the Lord, to have that sense of a joyful new beginning. And we were quite overwhelmed, which is what made it so joyful, by the numbers who came. Three priests, five hours each, 15 hours in all. The church constantly full of people seeking that new beginning. St. Paul, as we just heard, made that his prayer. May the God of peace make you perfect and holy, and may you be kept safe and blameless. This weekend, it's appropriate to reflect on the nearness of the Lord, the joy he brings, the life he calls us to. It's appropriate to reflect on and to respond to that call of John the Baptist to prepare. As Thomas Akempis wrote, if there is joy in the world, surely the one with a pure heart possesses it. We pray that we will know that joy.
And so we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the faithful are part of our evening prayer tomorrow. I can invite you to sit as we turn to the altar and give thanks to God for these gifts. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. 
And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension to heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognising the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Edward, St. Pius, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Richard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever.
at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. the body of Christ.
Let us pray. We implore your mercy, O Lord, that this divine sustenance may cleanse us from our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts through Christ our Lord. Having begun by mentioning the Catenians, it's good to have their president with us, it, uh, I might give a mention to the Knights of St. Columba at the end, in the interests of balance. Uh, there are posters available at the back if you would like uh, to display part of our evangelization, our witness, our joy. Uh, posters to display in windows of homes, um, so they're available in the porch. And I say thank you to the Knights for providing them. This weekend, uh, the 10% charity appeal has been opened for donations from all the churches in the parish. Full details of the appeal can be found on the parish website. Uh, various ways of making donations, including the use of brown uh, appeal envelopes. Uh, they were available downstairs on the way in. They're available in the porches of the other churches too. The appeal will remain open to the 11th of January and we do please encourage your support of it. It's a wonderful way to witness as a faith community to this great season by making sure that we can share something uh, with others uh, who have less to celebrate uh, this time of year. Next Saturday, uh, the 19th, Bishop Richard will be here to celebrate the 10 a.m. Mass uh, on the live stream. Uh, he's coming for two reasons. He will institute Sean Evans as acolyte, in preparation for Sean and Ian Hunt being ordained uh, as deacons uh, next year. So he also wanted to come and offer a personal word of thanks uh, to Deacon John Lamb. You may know Deacon John is retiring after an extraordinarily long and generous ministry. So he'll be here as well next Saturday morning during the 10 o'clock Mass. So the bishop might, on our behalf, express thanks and present to him uh, the gift which you've kindly uh, been putting together. All the details of the other live streams such as during the week are on the website. Uh, all the details too, hopefully, of this and much more uh, was in the email that went out yesterday. There has been a recurring question from some of the emails over the last 36 hours about the Christmas masses. Uh, you'll notice that they've not all appeared on the website uh, yet. I hope you'll feel it's fair and appropriate. Um, we're giving the stewards the opportunity to just make sure they've booked their families in uh, before it becomes open to everyone. Um, so that it would be stewards, families, uh, the rest of the parish. And we hope in many of the places to be using the church and the hall, so there should be plenty, we hope, of seats for everyone who'd like to come. I'm going to say thank you to the stewards. The steward this morning corrected me and said, no, no, you shouldn't keep thanking us. It is not just only a privilege, it's a joy. They said, it's a ministry. Do encourage others that if they would like to undertake that ministry, they will find it incredibly enriching. If you would like to undertake the ministry, I think we've covered the Christmas Masses, uh, but the Masses on the following Sunday, Holy Family. It would be wonderful to have some more stewards for those. Thank you, too, for all those who read, who sang, and as ever, make the IT work in the most seamless way possible, uh, making it look easy. I promise you, it most certainly isn't. The Lord be with you. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in glory. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives.
Oh.